Welcome back guys to another awesome Unity tutorial. I'm your host BliskinX and today we're going to be doing the player attack, the melee attack if you want to call it that. So we're going to first focus on the animations and getting that to work with maybe the mouse click, the left click, and then from there we will work with the actual collisions in our next video. So first things first, as you can see, I've gone ahead and created the animations over here under attack. I've gone ahead and put in all the sprites. I've ensured that they've set the widths correctly. If I click on this one, you'll see that I've set it to 16, knowing that it's a 16 pixel. Now I could pivot this and center it all. You'll notice that there's a slight kickback with regards to the animation. We're not gonna worry about that for now. I'll set the origin um, exactly to the T uh, once I've done with the video. There's no point in, or maybe make a separate video with regards to the pivot system. Okay, so I've gone ahead and set that. I've gone on ahead and also added all the animations. And if you're not familiar on how to do that, go and look at the player movement and you get a good idea of how to set this correctly. So I've gone ahead and obviously set that. So the next thing we're gonna to need to do is go back to our player tree, which is gonna be in our animator. And we're gonna do a number of things. The first thing we need to do is add a new perimeter. We're gonna call that for now, maybe attacking because we're gonna need that to know. Now we can use as a boolean. We need to know if the user is in fact um, in the attacking motion to then you know, begin the attacking um, animation. So I'm gonna go ahead and call that attacking. Then I'm gonna go ahead and just delete these animations over here because we're not gonna need that. I'm gonna bring down the any stack. So once we've done that, we can then create a new tree and I'm gonna create, like I've done with the movement one, I'm gonna create a state from new blend tree and I'm gonna just bring that down here and I'm gonna go ahead and call this the um, attacking. Let's call it attack, attack, like we've got there, which is fantastic. So there's our attack, and from any state, I'm gonna do a transition, make transition, I'm gonna pull it over there, and then from the attacking, I'm gonna make another transition, and I'm gonna go straight over to idle, okay. So that's, I'm gonna change this eventually do a complete separate blend tree because we need to do idles and all sorts of positions. So we will get to that um, eventually. Then clicking on the um, attack animation, I need to then bring in basically a perimeter that will allow us to, to know that if this condition is obviously true, um, the perimeter that we made, we need to go ahead and tell the um, to go ahead and tell the enemy to then move to um, to the attacking. I mean the player to move then to the attacking. So I'm gonna click on that one and I'm then gonna click on add a new perimeter. And as you guessed it, we're gonna be using the attacking is true, then go ahead and go into the attacking mode. All right, fantastic. Now that we have that, we can go in and double click our attack. And this will bring up the new blend tree. And what we're gonna to need to do here is we're gonna to need to do a number of things. So we're gonna add the perimeters because it's going to be a 2D simple direction as before. And we're gonna bring in the horizontal as well as the vertical because we're gonna need those specific points for each one. Okay. So once we've done that, we can go ahead and pull in the different attack animations. So the first one being the uh, right hand side. So we can go ahead and just click on add new and we can add a motion field and we can click on this little icon here. This allows you to sort of select a lot easier than having to drag it across. Um, let's go with a player attack down and then we can click on it again. And I'm just gonna do all of them quickly, add a motion field and let's do the uh, player attack up and vice versa as you guessed it. Uh, and again, uh, motion field, and this one will be player left, and again, motion field, and this is going to be the player right. So let's go look there, attack right. Fantastic. Okay, so now you can see that we've got the four, um, the four critical sort of animations added to the blend tree. Now we can go ahead and set the the attack. Uh, correctly based on the axes that he is. So obviously with attack down, which we just need to make sure this is attack down, fantastic. This will be the minus one. So I'm gonna go ahead and just fill that, right? So there we can see that is going to be the minus one for the down, and that is the down one, right? Correct. And then the uh, player left, where is player left? Is going to be the minus, the, that'll be minus one, yes. And then the player up is obviously going to be zero and one. And the player, right will be one and zero one and zero correct so that should be all our animation so if i pull the little red dot across you'll see that he is doing exactly what we need him to do to ensure that it is correct which is fantastic 
then we can go back to our blend tree our base tree you could say and just make sure that's all done correctly which is fantastic all right so now that we have that all added in there we can basically test that as well by by filling the perimeter so let's go ahead and test test that quickly and click on the animator here you'll see it's got the idle down which is correct and if i click the attacking mode you'll see it goes into any state regardless and it goes straight into the attacking so we know that the physics the actual mechanics do work now what we're going to do is just obviously write the script to, to or automate this um, correctly on the left click. Okay, so that's great news. So I could just uncheck that and you'll see he's gone back into the idle because he's no longer attacking. Right, so the next thing we need to do is some scripting to get this all to function. So we're gonna go ahead and click our player movement and that's gonna bring out our player script, our little C sharp script, and yeah, we're gonna do some magic. Okay, so as you can see, currently in the update, and I've got this fixed update, which is a lot more accurate with regards to the player movement and the animations that we're changing over here. I'm going to change things up a little bit because of the fact that as the as we start to scale the player, things are going to get messy. And the better approach is obviously to ensure that everything's got its own function um, to which we will call that will do respectable things. So let's go ahead and just do some tidying up first. So um, I should have done this off camera, but nevertheless, I'll just share what it looks like. So we are going to go write a new one for the player movement, which is this one in the fixed update. So let's go ahead and call this a void, um, and let's call it a move character, because that will just make a lot more sense. Okay, so character, character, and yeah, we can obviously go and close that off and start that void. So yeah, we're going to just go and cut this straight out. <clears throat> show you what it looks like oh stop it okay and i'm going to go ahead and just delete that completely if i can delete that completely right so there we've got our little move character and then we need to just call it and just ensure that everything works obviously we basically just call the function by going move character and we close it off like that okay so that just calls it very much the same thing but running it in the update for now the next thing I want to do is create another one and we're going to call that, let's call it, let's be creative, I guess. Let's say it's update animation and move character. So let's go again, void and let's go update, update animation, animations and move. Okay. So we know that that is in fact the, the function that will manage the animations uh, and the moving around of the character. Right, so then we're going to just go ahead and cut this all out. Cut that completely out. In fact, we're going to do something slightly different now that we've got the second function. We're going to cut that out and also cut the move character out because it needs to happen in this update and move. So we're going to go ahead and just paste that down below. Okay. Fantastic. And now we just need to ensure that that is called at the top. Okay. So this should be exactly what we had. We've just gone ahead and tidied it up a little bit so that it makes a little bit more sense now before we sort of begin to make the movement, you could say, of the player. So I'm just going to go ahead and save that and just ensure that everything is working correctly, that we've got no errors down below. doesn't look like we do. So we go ahead and save that. You'll see, and there it is. Great, fantastic. So everything's back to normal. Now you'll notice that when my player stops walking, he goes straight down to idle down. Now we can check the vector to make sure that it's not zero. Uh, the movement uh, but for now let's just leave it at that and then like i said we'll do an optimizing on animations because as i mentioned the animation for the attack you'll notice is also slightly pulled down if i go ahead and stop this just to show you and i click on my player and i play this animation which is the attack right yeah it's the attack right so if i go ahead and play that attack right or let's say attack down even you're going to notice he has a bit of a kickback as i said and we want to make sure that this is smooth from the base of which he's standing. So let's not worry too much about it now, but I'm just giving you a heads up if you do see it in the, in the change that we're going to be doing. Okay, so fantastic. Now that we have that, we're going to do something very quickly just to get that working with regards to the animation. So I'm going to go back to my, you could say, little script here, our player script. And we're going to then put in the update with regards to the, um, the animation. Now, the fastest way to do this is theoretically is to use the input on your project settings. I'm going to just assign mine to, if I go over to edit and we go over to project settings and you go over to the inputs manager, you'll notice it's got all these different inputs that's assigned to the game. So I'm going to use fire one for now, which will be my mouse as well as the left on control. And I'm going to use that to fire off the animation theoretically of the attack. Okay, so this is the fastest way to do it. But we would want later, and I think we might do it in the next one. In fact, let's just rather do it now. Let's just do everything the right way that way we don't need to revisit. So let's quickly create the public email. So let's go public. And this is just going to hold all our different states. 
public enum, and let's call it player state. And this is open, close that. And then let's go and create the first one, which is going to be walking. The second, which will be attacking. And we'll leave it like now. So if we add, for instance, dying or interaction, etc., we would then go and add it to this enum. That way we always know the states because we'll set the states based on the different functions. Okay. So now that that's there, let's go ahead and create a public variable for that, just for that. So we're going to go public um, player state, and that we're going to call current state. Current state. Right. So we've got that, and then we just need to create our void start again. So let's just do void because we need to set it on initialization start. And then on the voice start, we can go ahead and set the current state to walking or idle. We can even add idle, in fact. Current state, let's do it just to walking. To current state, sorry, equals, and we'll go player state dot walking. Okay, so that's the first one. So I'm going to go ahead and just save that quickly just to show you what I've done. So now we've got these states so that we know what states we're in. So if we're in the, in the, in the update animation state, we'll set the animation um, to walking, obviously this um, player state, and if we're in the attacking, we can do the same. All right, so we can go ahead and just save that. And now if we click on our player now, you'll see that we've got this current state, which is current state set to walking on default and attacking. So we have a lot of different states at least than we'll be testing, which makes it a lot easier. Fantastic. So now that we have that, we can go back to our script, obviously, and we can begin the magic. So the first thing that I want to do is the, do you need to, we need to check the state and obviously the button that we're firing with regards to what we've set. Now, as I said, I've set mine to the fire one button. So I'm going to keep mine there. So what we're going to do is add an if statement in the update. We're going to go if, and we're just going to open that and uh, just close it off. If input dot uh, get uh, button down and that would be the fire one so let's go fire one and then go ahead and obviously and so we need to uh, let's put an and here as well and uh, current state because we know the current state now current state is not equal to player state Player state dot uh, attack attacking. So remember, we want to make sure he's not attacking to fire it off. All right, and then go ahead and fire off the attack. And how we do that really is just going to be a lot simple. So we're just going to set the boolean of the um, of the of the variable that we created, uh, which will be the uh, perimeter. Sorry, that we created on the blend tree. We need to just go ahead and obviously set that. So. That is quite simple just to show you again over on the blend tree attacking variable. I'm going to set that to true so that the attack motion starts. So let's just go over here. And we can just go animator because it's really the animator. Animator uh, dot set bool. And that bool is attacking with a capital. So we're going to go attacking. And we're going to set that value. To true. All right, so this should work. Let's have a look. So if button is down, and then I'm going to put an else here, else, and I'm just going to drop the movement in. Okay, so I'm going to cut that and put that in. Fantastic. Go ahead and save that. Now this should bring the animation, the melee attack, to 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 life. So let's just go and test it, but it might just be a little bit weird. So let's have a look. Right guys, so that's exactly what I wanted and pretty chuffed that it's working the way that I intended. Now you can get it to do basically if the player is walking, you can prevent him. You know, you just check the player state and set that to false to ensure that when attacking, when he's walking, um, ensure that he can't swing the sword 
or alternatively when he is swinging the sword stop the walking so when swinging set players state to attack that way you prevent the update for the trigger with regards to the function of the walk all right guys so that is our video for today i hope you enjoyed it we're going to be looking at obviously a lot more of the animation as well as the movability around the player we're going to tackle all the idols um you know we only got the one idol set and then we're going to look at the interacting so i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you're new here you know what to do hit that little subscribe and the like button and we'll catch you guys in the next one